Today we are going to cover how best to navigate Article 430 of the National Electrical Code, which addresses motors, motor circuits, and controllers. And we're going to use NFPA Link to do it. Easy to use digital access to NFPA codes and standards. Let's get started. So from my desktop in NFPA Link, I'm going to navigate to the 2023 National Electrical Code and open that and then move to Article 430. So at the beginning of Article 430, we see that there's a figure titled as Figure 430.1 that's there. This should be utilized as your baseline anytime you're within Article 430 trying to figure out what particular part of a motor circuit that you're trying to determine the code requirements for. So at the lower portion of Figure 430, we see that it's very similar to a schematic diagram in the parts that are shown within the motor circuit. The lower portion, so if we take, for example, motor branch circuit, short circuit, and ground fault protection, if we look at that, it gives us part four as the section that would cover that in Article 430. So if we move up to the top of the table and find part four, we'll see that that correlates to motor branch circuit, short circuit, and ground fault protection, but it also lists sections 43051 through 43058. So if I'm specifically trying to figure out the motor branch circuit, short circuit, and ground fault protection, which is typically going to be fuses installed in a disconnect right by the motor, I'm going to utilize part four, but specifically sections 43051 through 43058. So I like to picture this as kind of a, a bookshelf in my bookends. So 43051 through 43058, those are my two bookends. And somewhere between there are going to be the answers to what I'm trying to find regarding motor branch circuit, short circuit, and ground fault protection. Now there's a few other caveats that we can talk about when it comes to, you know, early in part one that we need to know whether we're going to use table amps or we're going to use nameplate amps when we start doing calculations. But the general rules or general requirements about around motor branch circuit, short circuit, ground fault protection are found in part four. So if we scroll down the left side here, we can see that all the parts are broken out within link. And here's part four, 43051 through 43058. So initially we have the general statement, then our rating or setting for individual motor circuits. And then if we have several motors or other loads, multi-motor combination load equipment, combined overcurrent protection, branch circuit protective devices in which conductor they need to be in, size of the fuse holder, rating of circuit breaker. So really we can take that and look at specifically where we want to be uh, within that section with what we're dealing with. Uh, so if we just navigate to the general section here in 43051, we have the initial statement, part four specifies devices intended to protect the motor branch circuit conductors, the motor control apparatus, and the motors against overcurrent due to short circuits and ground faults. The devices specified in part four do not include the types of devices by 210.8, 230.95, and 590.6. So there's some general information there. Important uh, in the final statement here is that part four shall not apply to motor circuits rated 1,000 over 1,000 volts nominal. So it has to be less than a thousand volt rated motor. But then if we're trying to find that the size or the rating for the branch circuit, short circuit ground fault protection, we're really getting down into 43052. So within that, we have motor branch circuit, short circuit, and ground fault protective devices must comply with 43052B and either 43052C or D. So B states the motor branch circuit, short circuit, ground fault protective device shall be capable of carrying the starting current of the motor. So we know that with motors, there's typically an inrush of current uh, right from their initial startup. So these fuses typically, or the branch circuit, short circuit, ground fault protective device has to be able to withstand the starting current of the motor. And then from there, we move on to C or D. Uh, so 43052B in A is mandated, and then it's either C or D. But if we move straight down into 43052D, which is just a little ways down the page here, 43052D is dealing specifically with torque motors. So unless we know that we're dealing with sizing branch circuit, short circuit, ground fault protection for torque motors, D's out of the equation. So that means we have to meet 43052B and also 43052C. And then 43052, we're not gonna get into it here today doing the actual sizing, but 43052C 
revolves around using table 43052C1 for depending on what type of motor we have. And then also if we expand the table here, the different types of protection that could be utilized. Very commonly, it ends up being the dual element time delay fuses for motors just because of their protective application. So that's probably the most common. We hope that this video will help you to better navigate the code requirements in Article 430 of the NEC. Be sure to visit nfba.org front slash link and give Link a try if you haven't already. As you just saw, Link is truly a window to productivity.